What's up guys, Tugi here, back again. This is my Quebec City Nordiques franchise mode here on NHL 17. And you guys made it very clear in the comment section of the last video that we need to make a trade. And that is exactly what we are going to do. I am thinking of actually drastically changing this lineup. Not just Boone Jenner being gone, but potentially another big player or two to really shake up this team. Now, it's tough because we are so close to a playoff spot. As you guys saw, what was it, two points? Two points behind the Devils, I believe. We'll actually just wait for this to load and we'll take a look, so I'm not wrong. Yeah, we are two points out of a playoff spot. But I just I don't think we're good enough to make it right now. I think we're just a step away. But because of that, I'm going to make some drastic changes. We're going to go... You guys know, if you've watched my series... That I'm pretty conservative with draft picks. I don't like handing away big-time prospects or draft picks unless it's very evident that they're not going to be able to get it done. And it looks like that's the case with Boone Jenner. That might be the case with some other people as well. There are a couple of guys with expiring contracts where maybe it would just be best to send them away now rather than having to deal with handing them a big contract when we are uncertain about whether or not they are good enough. But I will stop rambling Let's get into the very first trade. At the very least, we will be acquiring Matt Duchesne. I told you guys we'd have to give up a lot, and we definitely are. Boone Jenner, our first round pick this year, a fourth round pick this year, and a fourth round pick down the road for Matt Duchesne. Is that a lot to give up? Yes, but that is what it takes to get a deal done. Now, the best way to really minimize how much we're giving up is to go on and make the playoffs and to make that first round pick a very late first round pick. That'll be very beneficial for us. Boone Jenner, he could come back to bite us in the ass. He could turn into that prime time player. We have to hope that he doesn't. But this is the trade. You guys said get Matt Duchesne, and we have. He will uh, hopefully turn this team into the winning team that it needs to be. But like I said, I'm thinking that I'm not done. I don't know. I'm going to explore a couple of avenues here. But Matt Duchesne is here. He is a true first-line center. And, God, I'm nervous about that trade. But I, it's done. Matt Duchesne is here. Jenner and the picks to Colorado. It's another gigantic trade. It really is. And it could come back to haunt us, or it could really pay off. Cam Atkinson, our leading scorer from last year, and Ryan Murray. Remember when I said that they were players with expiring contracts that we could potentially move? These were the two. We send them and a fifth-round pick to the LA Kings for Tyler Toffoli and their first and second-round picks this year. They'll probably be lower picks because LA is doing well this year. But I talked about getting Tyler Toffoli for Boone Jenner when this series first started. I believe in Tyler Toffoli. He's having a good season. It is very risky giving up Atkinson and Murray. We are giving up Murray because we are going to go sign Carl Alsner, of course, who is an 87 overall free agent. That is the backup plan. We will just go uh, best lines here for now until I can go and send an offer for Alsner. But Tyler Toffoli, he is hopefully what Cam Atkinson can be. He's 25. He still has some development time. He's having a pretty damn good season, or was with LA, and he's on a contract that is probably similar to what Cam Atkinson will get in free agency anyway, or had we re-signed him. And I have more confidence paying Tyler Toffoli that kind of money rather than Cam Atkinson. And when it comes to Ryan Murray, that's a huge deal to give up on Ryan Murray. But the defense, there's just there's something not clicking. There's something not clicking with, you know, the top four. I love that top four. But Hampus Lindholm, we just got, and we're going to stick with him. Seth Jones is turning into a monster. David Savard's a rock back there. We need something. We need to change it up. And the hope is that with Carl Alsner, we can shake things up. And put this team into a good spot. We're going to offer him a two-year deal. Originally, it was going to be a one-year deal. If he declines, I might answer back with a one-year deal. 
just so we can see if he actually performs or not. But if we sign him to a two-year deal, he doesn't perform, then we at least still have his rights and we could trade him at the draft for something or potentially another defender. But right now, this roster, here is what I'm thinking. Like that top line, that's improved. Duchesne and Toffoli as opposed to Jenner and Atkinson, that is absolutely improved. The second line, there's there's a question mark. I am almost tempted to go with this as our lineups. Give me one second. I just got to focus so I don't fuck it up. I'm tempted to roll with this. Hyman Dubois, Bergenheim, or um, Toulouse on the fourth, although I might trade both of them and just try to get somebody else. Carlson, Lindholm, Pulu Yarvi on the third. You know, Lindholm's not having a great year despite being a second line guy. Wenberg and M. Bjorkstrand, you look at those categories, like he's he's good offensively. He's very good. So I don't know. I'm thinking something like that. And then, of course, defensively, it will not be uh, Brad Stewart, although he might end up having to play a game. But it will be Holden on the third pairing and Alsner, ideally. So that's a big change. We might not be done. But before anything, and I'm actually going to leave the lines like that, we may end up having to play our first game here. I want to see, and it's funny, our next game is against the LA Kings. I do want to see if we can get Carl Osner, and we are going to have to play as they put Zach Trotman on waivers as a result of that move, which is funny. I kind of, ah, he's 27. No, that's right, I forgot he's a little bit older. Then I thought, well, Alsner except before this L.A. game. He won't, so we will sim it. Can we beat the L.A. Kings after making a trade with them? Oh, God. All right, well, David Savard is out for a bit, so I'm going to hit replace player for the moment. We lost in overtime. And give me one second here. We'll sim the New York game. i got to fix the lineups, and we'll see if Alsner signs before the game against the Hurricanes on the 6th. Good news and bad news. Carl Alsner is here. The bad news is Zach Hyman just went out to injury, and he is going to be out for the next month. So I do need to figure out what we're going to do on that fourth line right wing spot. We are one point behind New Jersey, two points behind Pittsburgh. We're in a very good spot. And I'm taking another risk here, guys. Uh, to me, this is a risk. Yuri Tolusti and Sean Bergenheim, who were both signed in the preseason. And Tolusti's doing all right. He might hit 30 points. Bergenheim, not so much. But I'm taking a risk to improve this team. We send them both to Anaheim for Antoine Vermette, Chris Wagner, and a late draft pick. Vermette on paper, better than both of them. We will see if that is actually the case. So guys, here it is. Here is the team. Is it better than what it was when we started this episode? I think it is. We have Saad, Duchesne, Toffoli on the top line, Kachuk, Wenberg, Bjorkstrand, Carlson, Lindholm, Puglia-Yarvi. And again, this will definitely change if needed. Uh, we could obviously put Lindholm back up on the second line right wing. And then the fourth line, Dubois, Vermette, and Mats Olsen, who gets the call up due to injury to Zach Hyman. He has had a meteoric rise in the AHL, the second round pick of ours in this past draft. The defense, of course, we have an injury right now, but it is Lindholm, Jones, Alsner, Weidman, Holden with Golubev, and then the goaltenders, of course, Corpi Salo and Jonas Enroth. And even down in the AHL, this team is just ripping people apart right now. Sonny Milano not having the best year. Cody Hodgson, who of course is still in the game despite retiring, is having a pretty good year. And we actually called up Olsen instead of Justin Fontaine and Chris Wagner. At least gets a spot down in Cleveland. But this is the team. Of course, dealing with some injuries right now. But I don't know. I think we're in a better spot. It's just a matter of whether or not this team can deliver and perform to the level that they probably should. But I don't think I can deny that we needed to make changes. As far as the trades go, of course, it's that big three to Lusty Bergenheim for essentially Vermette, Atkinson, and Murray to L.A., and then, of course, the Matt Duchesne trade. So we gave up a lot, but we got a lot back, and we will see if that pans out. As far as other trades go, because I don't want to forget, I forgot to focus on trades as we approached the trade deadline last year. Riley Shahan has gone to Vancouver for a third-round pick 
Alex Biega, and I think Brandon Whitney, a goalie prospect. And the Bruins traded Dalton Prout for Brandon Bolig, so way to go, Sweeney. That's a great trade. But getting back into the sim here, because I do want to finish the regular season here. We have 30 games to go. We are one point out of a playoff spot, and we will see if this team can get it done. Let's sim to the 26th. We will sim just before the trade deadline, just in case, because I want to scout out trade blocks. I want to see if anybody decents out there and available, but let's see what this new look team can do. Unfortunately, we're struggling a bit. We are struggling. Matt Duchesne's currently out with a concussion. He'll be back in March. But an overtime loss to L.A., lost to Carolina, lost to Dallas, lost to Washington, and a 6 nothing loss to the Edmonton Oilers, who we are better than. So that is very disappointing. Very, very disappointing right now. And let's actually get a look to see how far out. We are now six points out of a playoff spot with, what, 23 games to go? We have time, but we need to make the most of this. These are the lines we've been rolling with because of the injury to Matt Duchesne. Of course, Zach Hyman is the only other injured player right now. Wenberg stepping up. Matthew Kachuk, he's jumped to an 88. He's not doing anything, point-wise. He has a 91 overall wrist shot, 91 accuracy, 91 power. He has four goals. I, I just do not understand why he isn't scoring. He's playing with Elias Lindholm and Oliver Bjorkstrand, who should be able to get on the puck. Sonny Milano has been called up. Mats Olsen has three points so far, but it's been disappointing. Carl Alsner's a minus two. He hasn't really done anything yet so right now it's just players are underperforming and it's definitely costing us I do want to check around the league really quick uh, to see if there have been any other trades if there haven't I'm going to look at trade blocks as well just to see if there are any surprising names on there that maybe we could pick up for cheap but let's see and there have been no other trades and no other signings so let me see here what I think I'll do is if we do not make a trade, what is going on? Okay, there we go. If I don't make a trade, obviously we'll just jump to wherever the hell the next stopping point is, which, considering how many fucking games we have in March, will be about the midway point, the 14th. Or you'll see me make a trade. One or the other will happen. Mid-month update, we're looking okay. We're looking okay. We've got a couple of losses here and there. Calgary and New York, an overtime loss to Boston, but that's at least a point. 33, 26, and 9. We might be able to pull this off. That's, that's a might in capital letters. We are two points back of the Flyers, again, in a very tough division. But Jonas Enroth just got us a very, very big win against the New York Rangers. These are the lines we have been rolling with. And, hey, it's working at the moment, so I'm cool with it. Kachuk, unfortunately, down on the third line. Puglia Yarvi, not the best center, but he's getting the job done. And we have Olsen in instead of Hyman, even though Hyman is good to go. The defense, I've drifted away from my normal strategy. Right, you know, two righties together, two lefties together. We've kept Holden and Weidman the same, but we're changing things up, doing whatever we possibly can to try and make it in the playoffs. Of course, Sonny Milano back down in the AHL. We even sent Brad Stewart down, finally. But, I don't know, man. It's a very, very close race. I'm hoping that we can just sneak into the playoffs. That's that's all it needs to be. We just need to sneak into the playoffs. 14 games left. Two games, or two points, behind the Flyers. It is going to be close. I want to see the games at hand here. We have two games at hand on Philly, too. Oh, my God. We are in such a good spot. I don't think we'll be able to really do much damage as far as catching up to Washington. But we have a chance to make the playoffs against the Flyers. Is the, did the menu just bug out? No, okay. Atlantic Division is what I wanted to check. Buffalo's on 76 points. And, of course, the Atlantic doesn't have a Metro. Or doesn't have a Metro. Atlantic doesn't have a wildcard spot. The Metro has both. So we have a chance. 
I'm not going to waste any more time. We're going to keep simming, and we're going to hope that this team can get it done. 14 games to go in effort to make the playoffs. Let's see here. We will sim until the rest of the month. We will go to April. We have five games in April. Let's see where we stand on that day. And guys, it is with a pretty somber mood that I say we are fucked. We are pretty much fucked. We are pretty much out of it. Injuries have been a massive problem. Duchesne, Nick Holden's had three injuries. He's back now, but in the time. The injuries have killed us all season, and they've killed us down the stretch. We are six points back of the Philadelphia Flyers with five games to go. It's just... We, we tried our best. We tried our best. But it's just, it's not looking good at all. At all. We have one, we have a game at hand on the Flyers, but we also would have to jump the Devils. If we were in the Atlantic, and I actually, I keep fucking going the wrong way. If we were in the Atlantic, we still wouldn't be in a playoff spot. We'd be seven points back. So, I don't know, man. I just thinking this team is good enough because we have some great pieces on this team, but injuries and underperforming players have crippled us this season. We have five games left. We need to win pretty much all of them. First game here against the Washington Capitals is a 3-2 shootout loss. That is not good enough. Any moment now, that fan happiness rating is just going to plummet because it's going to be confirmed that we are out. It's another overtime loss. Fairly certain we have to win all three games here to advance. Owner happiness jumps up to amazing. Brendan Saad will be back from injury, which is nice. We lose 5-2 to the Rangers. I'm pretty sure we're confirmed out. I'm glad the owner's happy, but I think it's confirmed. And if it is, then so be it. But, yeah, we have two games left. We're five points back. We are out of the playoffs. We are out of the playoffs, and that is actually where I'll end this episode because it might be going on long enough as it is. In the next episode, we will wrap up the season, of course. We'll sim the last two games. We'll take a look at the stats. We will sim through the playoffs, and we'll begin the off season. all in the next episode. Um, but, yeah, I don't want this to go on any further. Uh, the off season video might be halved, so basically it might be finish the season, do the draft, and then have the off season. That way you guys can get a look at the stats and can get me some just. Can, uh, English can get me some suggestions on what we can do in the next episode, but I'm going to cut it off here. We missed the playoffs despite some, despite some our best efforts and some trades. Elias Lindholm's down to an 81 overall for some reason. We'll explore all of this in the next episode. As always, though, guys, I do thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button to help support my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already, and all the other normal shit I say in my outros. I'll see you guys next time.